just in the process of mixing down stems uh, from Ableton, um, you can see behind me, uh, into Pro Tools, which is something I do for most things if I have the time um, when I'm working in Ableton. You can probably tell it's still Ableton 11. You can see. So yeah, um, it's quite a long process, just letting it bounce the stems down and then importing into Pro Tools, where I just feel like I have a better grasp mix-wise. So as you can see, I'm now in Pro Tools, um, which I am more a fay with in terms of mixing. So um, again, I'm using a template which I will make a film about at some point. Um, and I mentioned in my last uh, film like this that I um, have that new addition to my template in that I use a bus fader to feed the master fader. Um, I'll show you. Being able to change the amount um, that goes into the master fader just seems to be um, really useful in affecting the tone of the whole piece. The other thing um, when I mix is um, every track has to be automated. I um, whether it's a hi hats or kick or or whatever, I want to automate everything, the levels. And you know, I'm not saying that that's a, that's a, something unique to what I do. Of course. Everyone does that probably, but I think it comes for me. It comes from uh, working with film music, and um, film music comes alive when you automate the levels of individual tracks. In terms of emotion, you can say so much with a gently uh, increasing volume-wise uh, tonal sound. out for a bit um, but just take this opportunity to say there's a few things going on the next couple of weeks ah thank you and um, it involves doing a bit of traveling um, and some of you have seen that sort of thing on my channel before and I enjoy filming that sort of stuff, so if it's okay with you, I will um, carry on doing that. Um, I think it'll be interesting anyway.
just recorded another ambient set. Um, more experimentation pedal wise. I'm going to reverb first. It's very hard to explain. <laughs> I'm going to a reverb pe pedal first before I go into the effects, which means um, I can play just soprano unaffected apart from the reverb. So, um, which, which, you know, just means that, um, this yeah so I have the blue sky strymon so the soprano sound is slightly wet um, makes it more atmospheric I think and then that goes into the microcosm the Strymon is it's quite a metallic sound I don't think I don't feel it's ideal I'm just using I'll show you in a sec I'm just using the you know a very straightforward settings but it's quite a metallic sound yeah so you can see maybe um, it's on normal quite a large decay on room a bit of pre-delay anyway Yeah, and as for the as for the Lyra, it's the um, as I said the usual. So I just take the reverb out. So now you're hearing the. Um, Wow and flutter. It's coming from the shallow water, as well as some distortion, some saturation. It's very hard to know what it is actually doing. Oh, if I alter the depth, you'll hear it. The, the pitch oscillation will be deeper. And less, more. Which uh, is pretty cool, um, and it's quite random, which is good. If I, I'm just going to bypass the shallow water. The other thing I like to do on the Lyra is this. Okay, what you're hearing now is doing it anyway. And the Lyra is so unpredictable. Wait, that's not... Okay. Okay, yeah, um, the shallow water wasn't bypassed. Okay, now it is. So, that's pure Lyra. If I turn the mod up, so each group of two oscillators has its own mod. Um, sometimes it works. That's it. There we go. So a little bit of mod on that. I should have done that uh, in what I just recorded, but that gives that sense of, if I bring the reverb back in, Filter it a bit. There we go. Because that human cry, um, put it over it. Oh, oh. 